Um, and there's a, a reference table, and you would you would uh, try to uh, to make use of this so that every cow that is taller than one meter and fifty four centimeters will receive a nine score. And then every three centimeters smaller, you go down one point. Now what is very helpful is in the afternoon when, uh, when we go in the barn and you might want to have a better guess how tall is this cow actually. If you measure yourself at a certain point, you know, my, my shoulder is approximately 1 meter 50. So I know from there, okay, if a cow is there, that's 150, I go down. And, and that way it can be helpful to, to make a better understanding of how tall is she actually. But when you evaluate for the mating program, I think it's also important to think, okay, is this cow optimum in stature or is she taller and is she unbalanced? Because a small cow in her front, a chest width that is very narrow, and a, a very tall cow has more problems than a small cow that is frail. So I would more easily give that nine to a a frail cow, which is maybe one meters fifty-two, than a smaller cow that is also very frail. Uh, 
should take pictures. Uh, that's very clear. Yeah. Uh, so that's true. We, we talk about linear evaluation specifically in this case for most. If we talk about a different breed, it could well be that the optimum is totally different. If we talk about Jersey, uh, we never find a cow of 1 meter 54. They're not around. The, the principle of linear evaluation is the same for any breed, but the optimum trait score for different traits will be different within reach. But what I was trying to say is in the USA and Canada, the average first location cow is two, three centimeters taller than in the Netherlands. But the interesting thing is, because I, I've had the advantage to travel a lot by my work and by my interest, but also by my eagerness to learn. And I've heard in the last year in the USA, in Canada, in Italy, in Germany, uh, Holstein breeders really saying the Holstein cow should not grow any tall. And the reason, the simple reason is they don't become more efficient if they become tall. And tall is exactly what we talk about with stature. If they become taller, they will not become more efficient. But we talk about the average cow. So if we talk about in Canada, the average effort of first location is one meter fifty, and farmers say, and not just one or two, but large groups of farmers say we don't want them to become taller, then one fifty-four is not the optimum. <laughs> So I would either uh, I would I would rather say the optimum for a Holstein first rotation cow would probably be about one meter and forty six forty eight. But and that's the last thing about Sergio. But there is a, a real big challenge and discussion right now in the world of Holsteins about how stature um, will still continue to go up because it's correlated to other score. And so if we breed for better others still within the Holsteins, we will eventually get taller cows. So we have to realize that by selecting bulls. If a farmer says my optimum would be 1 meter 45, then we should not select bulls that transmit extreme stature because they will transmit much more stature than that farmer is looking for. Okay, second trait, chest width, but also called strength. In, in a lot of parts of the world we call it strength. Um, it's measured from the inner surface between the top of the front legs. This is what we measure between the front legs, just below the chest. How much? Yeah. Okay. Now I miss my mouse. 
<laughs> and I just say, you can point out a little bit more. What can you do? No, no, and if you could just give my arms. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, so uh, intermediate would be four to six, would also be the optimum for a first attention count. We are, we are not looking for first rotation counts that stand like this and have here 40 centimeters between. But if you see a young cow that has this, regardless if you like it or not, we score a nine. Because she has extreme width, and that's why he scored. We, we discussed it the last time already a little bit. The centimeters that are given there, I question a little bit. Because I think 13 centimeters is really narrow, but 29 uh, is only like this wide between the legs, is not extremely wide for my feeling. But if you measure, to, especially in the beginning with training, uh, measure between the legs and not the whole width here. Now, what I also like to address is take into account how deep is the chest wall and the first rib. It is only maybe 10% in the five, in the total score for uh, chest width. But the reason for telling this is in the USA and in some other countries they evaluate strength and that is the total capacity. Oh, it's going the wrong direction. How is this possible? Yeah. Uh, there in, in the USA, within strength, we look at the depth of the first rib and the depth of the chest wall. But that's an extra, an extra beside looking at the width between the front legs. But it tells you also how is the total capacity in the front of the cow? Does she have the capacity for lungs and heart to pump and work hard? For body depth, the third trick, we look at the distance at the rear ribs. We look from the top of the of the, 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 the spine at the, the back and the depth of the barrel at the last rib. How much capacity is there? Towards the back of the cow, or do they point 
If they go to the back of the cow, they automatically open up. If they go straight down, they will stay very narrow to each other. Exactly, that's a beef cow. But beside that, we also look at the spring of the rib. That means that if I stand from behind the cow, she's standing with her head to the window there. We observe the spring as if the ribs come from the top, from the spine, all the way out to the outside of the cow. So it's a combination of both. A cow that scores extremely high on angularity has the ribs pointing backwards, but also the ribs coming out of the spine to the outside. So then you have the extreme combination. They're coming out, they're going backwards, they open up. The further you go, the more space between these ribs. That's a true daily cow. But if you have a late lactation cow and there is quite some, some uh, body condition already or fat even on the ribs, it's harder to observe. And then it can be very helpful to look at a few other things. First, the neck, the length and the fineness of neck. A, a, real, a real dairy cow does not have a very short neck. The thighs, yeah, the, 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 the back of the cow, the thighs, like in your, in your um, page, on your page, it will be shown where the thighs are. For a true dairy cow, although late rotation, they will be finer than a cow that is very round, like a beef cow. And even the hide. You know, like, if you're evaluating cows, don't be afraid to touch them, unless they're walking around and it's quite, quite difficult. Then. But, but feel the tissue of the other, feel the hide. A cow that is true dairy almost always has a very silky, fine hide. And a true beef cow has a thicker But these are the extras. You just at the beginning you start. If the cow is standing here and look facing forward, you just stand a little bit beside on the left to define angularity. On the left side. That's the most easy way to see what the ribs do. Do they come out? And do they open up by springing? And again, don't try to give your value, but try to observe what you see. And if it's extreme high, you give a nine. But that doesn't always say that the nine on the first rotation count is the best score. She might be too extreme open without adequate strength.
because I missed it. Uh, I think we're good for time. Road angle. What can I see? The road angle is measured from the point of the hips to the farthest point, the, the nearest point of the pins. by the tail head. So you really have to focus at the pins, not the tail head, and look at the line from the hips to the pins. A level run gets a three score, and then go down more, you go down, sorry, you go up in your score, you go higher in your score. Uh, what do we say? Two, every two centimeters, you go up a point. And so the extreme slope, eh, which stands for 12 centimeters or more, from this line and from the level line down, uh, gets a nice score. And it, again, the intermediate score, 5, 6, is the most optimum, slightly slower. But I would like to address with this trait, observe if the, the cow is standing squarely, because if she puts her legs behind her, you know, just tick on her legs, try to get them underneath the couch so that she's standing squarely, then observe. But always keep this in mind when she's walking. What happens to this run? Now I know that the farm here uh, from the university, the cow cows are in stanchions and they're tired. No. They walk around. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I was missing part there. <laughs> I checked. Apologize. I apologize. They're, they're walking around. Okay. But that's because that's that's the best way, you know? You observe standing when you let her out of the lockers and you let her walk around, see what happens. If a cow then uh, shows weak loins, often the rump, when walking, moving around, will go up more than you would have expected. Please correct them. Because what you want in the end is an improvement on this cow on this big trip. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
what they say or at, at the most the back point of the camel. At the center point of the hips. Uh, excuse me, at the center point of the pins. The pins. And we measure the width there, and there's a reference scale at 10 centimeters is about this. That's so a one. Often with Holstein cows, you see if they're that narrow, that just the tail fits in between and there's no space beside it. And for a nine, my hand is way too small. You probably might have, you know, the, the nearest point of the of the pins. You might have like this wide. It's very easy. Put your hands in the beginning on it. Put your hands uh, at the measurement. Okay, this is at 15 centimeters, let's say. And then quite soon you'll know, okay, feeling this, this is a five, this is a three. Then, 
legs uh, side view or rear legs set, we also call it, uh, but I'd like to talk about more about the legs and side view, I think that's more obvious. So we look from the side of the cow how uh, the angle in the hock is uh, is a is, is Regardless if we like or do not like to see it, the extreme straight leg, almost like a fence pole, is always a one. And the extreme curved or sickled leg from side view is always a high school. Then we observe and measure the foot angle. We measure from the high point here uh, of the roof towards the floor of the toe on the front side. And we try to measure the angle that it makes. So, suppose you would have a 90, uh, sorry, uh, a 90 degree angle, it would be straight down. You, you hardly see that, but that gives you uh, sort of help. And 90 is this, zero is this, and we want to be somewhere in the middle. About uh, 45 degrees would be average. A cow that has this extreme steep foot angle walks on the tip of her toes. She can't walk. I assume you ladies understand this better than, than us men, as we don't have the high heel shoes. But uh, I assume uh, if you have to walk on these extremely high heel shoes, every day, the whole day, that sometime you will feel your toes fall. So we want cows with an average foot angle and balance and pressure on the whole foot. Now if you have a very low foot angle, in general, they will put more pressure on the back side of the foot. Now this is the, this is the second most difficult trait. This is the second most difficult trait to observe. And the reason is that if the cows are being trained frequently and you come in just a week after training, it's more difficult to see the difference between the cows than before training. But still, still you try to observe and do the best you can in a way that a very steep foot angle will after trimming not be a flat foot angle. And a very flat foot angle will after trimming still be a little bit more flat, low angle, because if there is no heel, no height of the heel, you can't create that after trimming. Thank you. 
receive the fruit, but still pointing out. Yes, I think, yeah. Uh, not from the rear view, I mean. Yeah, right. Yes. And last, if, uh, if you have uh, difficulties because the cows are in the manure standing, you might walk, uh, also be, it might be helpful to watch the hairline. If that is horizontal, you almost always have a steep foot angle. But if it's like this, is not horizontal but vertical almost, then you'll often have a lower foot angle. observe 
the strength of the attachment to the abdominal wall. And you can you can see that here at the poor score there is a lot of bulginess and there is a, a, a sharp corner towards the abdominal. And here you see that the uh, forerunner is well attached, very smoothly going over into the you might often, it's, it's also a bit weird, but you might often see difference between the left and the right side of the cow. And especially the And we all have decided then to look at the worst side of the cow for evaluation. Unless, of course, unless the cow has had uh, a mastitis or another problem and that the dish quarter has dried up, then it's not uh, possible to evaluate it and you will always look at the other side of the quarter. And so the intermediate uh, score between four and six will have slightly uh, bulginess, it's not extremely tight uh, attached, but it's correct. But here, a high score is obligedly better, except for that quite often we wonder if we score the cow with the 9, Will this four part, will that also contain tissue where milk is stored, or is that sometimes a little bit more um, fleshy tissue just here in the, in the four part? So, so we rather this part sure. Is, uh, happen to be. Sorry? On this part, uh, the tissue happen to be there. Well, we question that in certain cows. So I say the eight score is probably the best, and the nines are always questionable. Will they contain enough milk storage? Yeah. or front position. The reference point is that we look from uh, where does the teeth come out of the quarter? Is that position squarely in the middle, middle or on the outer side or the inner side of the quarter? You can see very nicely, maybe also on your screen, or on your, on your uh, 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 brochure, but here it's completely on the outside of the quarter. The score 5 is exactly, exactly the center part. And here you see uh, front teeth placement extremely on the inner side of the quarter. It is very important to observe where the teeth placement comes from the quarter and not the distance between the Because you will be influenced by if it's just before or after milking. Cows can vary five to ten centimeters distance between these front teeth places, teeth, teeth sorry, uh, by being filled up or being empty in their udders. So always take that into account. Uh, we've discussed that the last time a little bit, I can recall it. I think it's correct, you know, 
a teeth from one centimeter uh, long you will hardly ever see or find. So I would suggest that the two centimeters a teeth still gets a very low score and from there you go up each centimeter. Now I always say with that, at first the patient count a little more than three fingers, because I've got quite thin fingers, um, it will be a five. But if I look at your hands, then it probably is with two fingers. And if you've got <laughs> women hands, so what you have to do oh, is hands five centimeters. <laughs> so what I would say is suggest is use the measurement of centimeters. No, okay, this much is that average, let's say five, six centimeters. So that in the beginning you can you can measure for yourself and then in time you'll know okay this is a five, this is a three, that's a one. Okay? Oh uh, yeah. We look at the deep root or the lowest part of the other four and compare that to the center part of the heart. So if you have an other that is, or the four of the other is unbalanced, backwards or forwards, then we look at the deepest point of the other and compare that to the middle line of the of the central part of the heart where you draw your line. And level with the heart, we score a two. Level on the heart, so if the deepest point would be at the heart, then we score a two. So that means we won't often score twos on first attention counts if we're correct, if we're doing three really improvement. So it's correct if two points for uh, first attention counts? No, no, no. no. I said, we do not often see cows, first division cows, scoring a two because then they have two departs. Yeah. But if you would evaluate a herd for the first time, you will also evaluate all the cows. Yes, then you will score your maybe even one set. That is a one going below the average. 